person who Paul Krugman. Now, Krugman is not viewed as a very pragmatic person, is not a person who's really compromising with organized interests in order to get things done. But in a way, he was saying he was doing too much of that. He wasn't standing up for principle enough. So this is the really question. So a, a person like you who stands up for principle so strongly, how do you see that? How do you see that as turning into a political strategy? Well, I think it's actually really irresponsible to undertake discussions of political issues without paying attention to the pragmatic, to pragmatic considerations. I mean, I think it's a luxury that really we can't afford to sit around and treat political questions as though they're kind of abstract discussions that should be confined to um, very effete and lofty areas without a, 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 any attempt to actually change outcomes. And I suppose if you were more content with the political climate, if you thought that things were essentially okay, then you could indulge those kind of questions in a more academic or, or abstract way, but I don't think we have that wonder. I think it's actually the reverse. I think it actually is an obligation, if you're going to involve yourself in the political uh, arena, to be very attentive to how not only you can disseminate ideas, but how you can have some sort of impact or how you can actually change things. So oftentimes I mock the notion of pragmatism. Not because I think that actual pragmatism is something to be derided or disregarded, but because what pragmatism typically means, especially in the sort of post-partisan age of Obama, um, is that we need not be anchored to any particular political principles. Um, and pragmatism has really come to mean um, being able to jettison principles at any time in pursuit of some sort of political end. And I think when that happens, um, you may still be in the realm of the pragmatic, but then you dispense with your other obligation, which is to affirm that certain principles are serious and authentic and important, um, and that pragmatism is a vehicle for fulfilling those principles and for ensuring their, their preservation. So, you know, it's typical in forums like this, and, and, and in terms of what I do, I get this question all the time, well, you, you know, are able to diagnose these problems, you, rile people up over them. But what really is it that you think can be done? And it's a very difficult question to answer, but I don't think it's a question that can be avoided. And I actually am a believer, and this may be somewhat naive, but I'm actually a believer in the power of reason. I think that human beings can always find ways to persuade other human beings of things that are true and to get them to renounce things that are false. And oftentimes when we fail to do that, we try and blame external circumstances. We say, well, the, the forces are just too aligned against us, and, and it's not possible for us to succeed. I don't actually believe that. I think if one is failing to do that, it's just because one has not yet found the right mechanism to convince enough people. So I actually think when we gather in these kind of settings, um, if you're somebody who goes on the internet and breaks down your ideas and tries to persuade other people, that is action. That is a form of pragmatism, an important form of pragmatism, to persuade other people that your perspective is right, that the problems you think need addressing are actually needing addressing, that the solutions that uh, people have seemed to settle on are, are, are inauthentic. And, and to me, that's always the most important step. I've done other political strategies and organizations and campaigns over specific issues. Um, but ultimately, I think that the first and most important priority in that regard is to persuade, to disseminate ideas and, and facts and, and to get people to share your perspective. So, I mean, 